All right. Hello and welcome to the Spin and Back Fist MMA show for Tuesday, July 19th. It is Robbie. It is Big Ev. It is Jack Mac. It's Lee on the producer side. And we have a special guest joining us right off the top. It's Matt Schnell. He pulled off one of the greatest comebacks we've ever seen in the UFC, I would say. I would, I would go as far as saying that, especially seeing it in person. Maybe a little recency bias, but I don't think so. Matt, how you doing? Doing good. Happy to be here. What's up, boys? Not much. We're uh, happy to have you here. We got the connection through Mincy. How did that connection happen? <laughs> you and Mince. I want to start with that right off the top. Me and Mincy are both from Shreveport, Louisiana. I mean, I met him in Shreveport. Uh, he's kind of a local Shreveport legend. So I've been on his radio show in Shreveport. He plays poker with uh, my uncle who deals at the Horseshoe Casino. So we, we go a little ways back, me and Mincy, and I've been happy to see him out there. Uh, that bar stool just killing it. He's he's amazing. He's almost a national legend now. I love that. Yeah. yeah. King of the South, they call him. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to us about Saturday. It's an early morning fight card. How you feeling going into the fight? How are you feeling with Minty was talking a lot about, you know, you're a, a plus 220 fit underdog. Really you're you're going to win there. It's like super uh, it's super crackly over here. It is crackly. We're having some audio issues. I don't know what that could be. You see six? Turn it down a little bit. No, down. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. It's definitely yeah. You're going the wrong way. Little technical difficulties. No, it's good. <clears throat> I would just do with it, but I don't know. can't understand what y'all are saying. Still crackly? Do you hear it? No. No crackle? I, and I hear no crackle. Way. I hear crackle, yeah. It's so weird. We're off the Wi Fi, right? We're wired in. Yeah, we're wired in. Is this better? Well, we're doing a test here. This it is better. It's still a little crackly, but I can at least understand you. I don't know what that could be. Yeah, I don't think it's all right. Uh, you could tell them that leaving. Do you, do you want to try to uh, leave the Zoom and rejoin or the link? I really think it's better now, and I can probably it's, – it's cool. I can work with it. You can't hear anything. Earlier, it was so loud. It, it just was like it sounded – I couldn't understand anything. Now it's good. Oh, it's good now? Yeah. Oh, okay. I still hear that. We're still getting a little bit of crackle on our end, but as long as it's good for you, I mean – it's gonna Just a little bit. As long as I can understand you guys, I can keep moving. All right. I mean, we could we can go. All right. We'll, we'll give it a shot. We're going to try our best. This is going to be. A, we're going to have to pull off a Matt Schnell style comeback for this interview. <laughs> I believe it. So, talk to us about Saturday. Walk us through the the fight, or how much of it you remember, if if you remember it at all. Yeah. Uh, I felt, especially after the first round, I felt like it went mostly to plan. Uh, we, we thought that I would be able to, you know, hold my own on the feet, hit him with hard shots, create my opportunities to close the distance and score the takedown. And that's exactly what happened. First round, I went straight to mount. Everything was feeling good. <clears throat> Second round comes out, and uh, I, could, I could tell Sue was definitely kind of on his horse a little bit. He was trying to make something happen. He knew, he knew the first round got away from him. And he lined me up with that first hook cross, and it was kind of all uh, – we were stumbling and bumbling from there. But I, I think it was that initial one that really got it going. And then I think those elbows definitely chipped me up too. But uh, ultimately just thankful and, and happy that we were able to come out on the on the winning end of it. 
shout out to my coaches. We've been working hard on keeping my feet underneath me and, and just keeping my base a little better. And I do think that that paid, paid off in this fight. A little bit of luck too, but. Was there ever a point in time, because I think as a fan watching it, you took, hey, obviously ate a couple of big shots, but you did keep, I feel like every few, like you, you'd always kind of respond with one that would kind of keep you in it. Was there ever a point in time that you thought the ref was going to stop it? Uh, even just yeah, standing? Thought, there was a few times we felt like that too. Yeah, I felt like it was getting close and I was just trying to keep it moving. Honestly, I was just trying to keep it moving. And I think I even heard at least at one point uh, fight back. And I think that's a, a second later I, I heard him with like a cross hook, just kind of launched it out there because, uh, you know, he was having so much success. He, he, he wasn't worried about anything coming back. back. So when I would zip him back, uh, it would, it would score. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I was certainly in trouble and, uh, yeah, happy, happy to come out of it. I was the most impressed with how well you responded to being hurt. Like you would get hurt, and then I, within seconds, it would seem it seemed like you were just recovered. Like your health bar went all the way back up, and you continued to move forward. Is that something you've always had confidence in? Where it's like maybe you'll get stunned for a second or two, but it's like, hey, after that, it's it's all business. So you keep moving forward. Or is that something that, for whatever reason, adrenaline in this fight really took you to the next level? Yeah, I think it's always important to kind of have a poker face and even when you're hurt try to, to, to keep yourself moving if if you're still well connected like I was getting hurt but it wasn't I, I guess it wasn't you know I wasn't like walking funny afterwards I was able to to get my uh neurology back about me I suppose and, and I wasn't wonky legged all over the place for too long but uh I think it's I think it just the training came into play we knew that we didn't want to get caught at the end of what he was throwing uh, his best shots, that's what it was. He was hitting me with that long straight left right at the end of it. And uh, we didn't want to be there, so I figured I, I might be hurt, but let's not move off into a zone where I'm gonna where I'm gonna get hit with a, another clean shot and ultimately finish. What was it like getting out of the cage and seeing the response on Twitter, people talking about the fight, the crazy pictures from the actual finish of the fight, people talking about the comeback. What was that like for you? It was great. You know, I've been at this for a long time, guys. My, my career spans over 10 years as a professional. And, uh, you know, a little bit of validation never hurt anybody. And I've been at this for a long time. And it feels good to go out there and put on a performance like I know that I, that I, know I can. And, uh, yeah, feels good. But, um, you know, definitely not satisfied. Would like to avoid taking whippings in the future. And I think that I'm about to go on a run. I think I'm one of the best guys in the world. So it's good to uh, have had such an opportunity to introduce myself to such a large uh, amount of people on ABC. But, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Let's get back out there soon. I would say kind of piggybacking off that, like obviously in a, in a fight like that and just any fight, so much adrenaline, like so much going on. You mentioned the obviously huge card in New York on Long Island, it's on ABC, national television. How long does it take after the fight for you to kind of like have a moment for yourself and be like, wow, like that was that was a huge moment. I think for your career, like that put you on such like a national scale. How long after the fight did it take to like, for that to really like set in a little bit? You know, I still don't think it has hit me completely. And uh, I, I don't know, it's, it's it's been good. I, I do and I have enjoyed my time here recently, and uh, you know feel confident moving forward. It's a good way to get started, uh, moving in the right direction. But I think I'm still kind of dealing with it and uh, processing it all. So happy to be here. It's it's pretty cool. You know I'm a fan of bar stool, and obviously uh, you know it's all it's all a dream come true. But we've been after this for a long time. You know. Overnight success, that's a 10-year process. It's literally been 10 years I've been a professional. So, Yeah, Mincy was telling me about you want a, you want a fight show in Louisiana, like, and that's the first time that he heard of you. And he said it was about 10 years ago, nine, eight years ago. Did you happen to see all the comments on – well, support, obviously, you were like – you took over the internet for about 20 to 30 minutes there. and But did you see the Sport Center Twitter post where everyone was – talking underneath they were like this isn't a sport 
blah, 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 blah. It was crazy. We quote tweeted and we're like, oh, man, MMA is not a sport anymore. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, it's hilarious. That's a very minute group of people, very small batch. Like, I think most people understand. Uh, what's going on blood especially in the face i mean it's it looks worse than it is you know we're, we're a yeah. cut up with bison dice but i've checked on sue i think he's doing okay he's he's on on the on the mend and that kid's tough he's gonna be out there soon too he's really talented and gonna have some great performances so i i understand where people are coming from but when i see that stuff it, it's really just ignorant to me and uh mm. well, i think we understand at this point like fighting of course it's a combat sport it's brutal but it's no more brutal than boxing. It's no more brutal than even football, which is America's absolute favorite pastime. Mine included. I'm a football guy. So, uh, it's you know, people are just silly. So it's all good, but uh, pretty hilarious, I think. Do you have a uh, favorite college team? I know you're down south. It's, maybe you're more Saints guy, but. I'm an I'm a LSU fan. Okay, on, you know the answer. <laughs> I didn't know. Mincy, Mincy's like we actually joke around though. We say Mincy's the biggest LSU fan we have in the office. <laughs> he's an old Miss guy, right? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, he's he. I, I do a lot of like sports talk with him, and he always is like LSU, LSU, LSU. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you can you can like multiple teams. That's okay with me. I'm a sports fan, so. Uh, I feel that. I typically root for the whole SEC until they're pl- playing the LSU Tigers. So. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. It's a great time for the division right now. You called out a fight at MSG. Do you have any opponents in mind for that, or you just want to be on that card? I called out the guy who's ranked ahead of me right now. He's one slot ahead of me. His name's uh, Mateus Nicolau. He's a Brazilian kid. Yeah, that's right. Really, really great fighter. Uh, strong. I mean, it, it's it, was, it wasn't a call out where I was like, I'm better than this guy. I'll whip his ass. It's like I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to get to the title, and I know that uh, you know, let's aim up and, and and make it one fight at a time. And I think that would be an entertaining one. I think uh, Madison Square Garden is a good timeline. It gives me a little time to recover here and then get back into training and then uh, come in and have a good performance. I don't know. I, I know he's not booked up too, so it was multifaceted. But no way did I mean any uh uh malintent i don't uh, you know there's no disrespect to this kid i think he's tough uh everybody in this division is tough that's what's mm-hmm. wild about this yeah. division number 21 can beat number six so mm-hmm. uh it's, it's just one of those things in the sound division but uh one fight at a time let's get back out there so that's who i called out but honestly <clears throat> whoever the ufc deems fit i'll uh, i'll fight so um let's go is there something special about New York for you, like wanting to fight at MSG right after Long Island, or is it just the allure of like G? MSG, come on, baby, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, MSG. You want to talk about Mecca. you know uh, a, a full career is complete with a with a performance at Madison Square Garden, the mecca of combat sports. Uh, that's uh, that would be a dream come true. I've enjoyed my time in the UFC, but I've seen the world doing it as well. And uh, why not another feather in the cap? Why, why not MSG, Madison Square Garden? Not to mention, I just won in New York before. I fought in Newark, New Jersey, and I got a finish and a bonus that night too. So maybe that's my spot. Maybe maybe I'm hot out there. I love it. Yeah, next time you're in New York, come through the office. Yeah, definitely, 100. No, I was going to say, obviously, you want every, everything, every combat sports fighter want to fight in New York, but obviously just having that performance in New York, you just said Newark. I think maybe maybe even more of a pop this time, especially to get you on the crowd. I think a big time, pop. big time. You'll see a lot of crossover from guys that are at the uh, Long Island event, at the MSG event, become like a New York like folk here almost. I imagine so. Yeah, and why not? Why not? What uh, what city's more American than New York City? And uh, you know, God bless America. Let's get out there and make a little pop. I, I loved it this time. It was great being the guy that was actually being cheered for. So let's go. It would. It was, uh, Ev told me this and Lee did too, right before, uh, right, actually right after I got into the arena, I guess it was the large, uh, like the biggest grossing event. Biggest fight. It was the biggest fight, fight night, night ever. Yeah. Fight night ever in the terms of the, the, gate. the gate. The gate. So, I mean, that's how it goes to show New York prices, but also <laughs> the, I was really impressed by the fans there too. They were just this. The loudest the stadium was, I think, was when a oh, thousand, thousand oh, yeah, was yeah. when I don't know. Do you notice that? Did you like feel it that loud, or are you just so in the zone that you're like, I was, yeah, I was in the zone. I was in the yeah. zone, and, and I, I honestly try not to. I try to kind of tune it out a little bit, just so 
because uh, I, I can be a wild man out there. And I, if, if I'm feeding into the crowd, uh, I can let things get away from me. So that's something that we've worked on. And, uh, yeah, it was nice, though. It's nice to hear the pop. Uh, I, I, I appreciate it. How did you celebrate after the fight? <laughs> I went back to the hotel, hung out with my wife. We ordered uh, Shake Shack and uh, just nice. chilled. I packed up my stuff, came home. I was on the first flight out. Uh, I hadn't seen my little girl in like nine days, so it was time to get back home. That's awesome. You made it back home on Saturday, I guess, because it was an early card? Yeah, Saturday. I was home 10.30 a.m. Or, or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sunday. Sunday morning. 10:30 oh, gotcha. Yeah. And that Sunday, on Sunday morning when you woke up, were you feeling it more so than other fights? Obviously, this one was like it's going to be seen as probably your biggest quote-unquote war but I know it's different for every fighter. Sometimes the ones that don't look like they hurt the most, the next day they end up hurting the most. I'm, I'm pretty beat up. Uh, my forearm and, and my leg, he keeps kicking at my leg pretty well. Uh, I actually gave myself this black eye here <laughs> because uh, so after the fight, I mean, you can go and look at the interviews. I, my eyes, it looked like I, I had obviously been in a fight, but I, I didn't have this eye. And uh, but he did crunch my nose pretty good. So when I got home and I got in the shower, I went to clear my nose. And when I did it, I blew up my eye. I don't know if you all remember Ooh. Donald Cerrone did Cerrone, it. Cerrone, yeah, oh, he did that yeah. bad. And it was the same thing. I, I, you know, went to throw a blow a snot rocket, and, and my eye blew up. I was like, ah, god dang it! So uh, <laughs> that, did that to myself. Had that ever happened to you before? Or no, no. What does that feel like? Is it just crazy pain in your eye? It, it was wild. It, it wasn't pain, but there was pressure, and I, I knew what had happened as, as soon as I did it. And Luckily, I didn't do it in between rounds because I think it was the first cross that he crunched my nose with. Uh, uh, and that was that was early, early in the first round that he hit me with that. And I remember my coach even told me in between rounds, do not blow your nose. And I wasn't thinking mm -hmm. about doing it then. But after the fight, I'm all cooled off. It really didn't – you know, I was still able – I'm still able to breathe through my nose pretty good, but – uh, yeah, it's definitely crunched in there. I've got some, I got some stuff going on. But yeah. a couple weeks, a couple weeks, we'll be back. You know, I, I'm gonna try and avoid uh, any type of brain trauma for a good 45 days. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, we'll right. be back to working the skills and moving around and doing our thing here shortly. I remember Rogan, or maybe it was DC, right after Taroni blew his nose. They were like, "No, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that." And it two seconds later, yeah, it was. And then it was, up. and it's always interesting to hear that coaches are telling their fighters, "Hey, you can't do that. Don't do that." And it's a good to remind them, I'm sure, because like to get stopped, yeah, yeah, if, if you can't see. Matt, we really appreciate you joining the show. Sorry about the little technical difficulties at the start. Next time you're in New York, come through Barstool HQ, and we'll do it in person. With Mincy, sounds good. Boys. Yeah, with I'll Mincy, we'll get Mincy in here. Absolutely. Got to have Mincy there. I'll definitely take you guys up on it. Thank y'all for having me. Uh, it's all been a dream come true. Hopefully I get that slot in, in New York and mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll hear, we'll hear that New York pop once more. So really looking forward to everything. Thank you guys. Tell Mincy what's up and uh, I'll catch you next time. Absolutely. Appreciate Congrats you. on the win, man. Thanks for making us some money as well. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it, Matt Schnell of uh, UFC Long Island this weekend. We were all there at UFC Long Island this weekend. It was a great time. Um, shout out to the UFC for hooking it up with the tickets and everything. And we're actually going to have another guest who wasn't on the title in description because when we went live, we didn't have him locked in. But it's Roman Feraldo from Bellator, 7-0, seven, seven knockouts, and one of the most viral knockouts yes. of last year, the, yes. point the point running he near. He hurt him with a punch. Point at him and then went switch jump knee. Blasted Unbelievable him. finish. Blasted him. Like one of the more respectful finishes ever of just like, you're dead. And then immediately. <laughs> like, I'm like, going to kill you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got some insane power too. Like I don't know if you saw. So his fight after his most recent fight. Yeah. He basically knocked the guy out with a jab. <laughs> yeah. Like he, he had to ground, like finish with ground pound, but the guy was like, he hit him with a straight, like a straight jab. And the guy was like out of it. Yeah. He so was rolling around on the ground. I he's no got a fight on, on Friday. Which will be yeah, the night Bellator before was UFC two, London. Is it 83? Oh. I think it's 84. 84? 84, 84. I'll, I'll, yeah, we well, should, I'll double we check. figure that out before he joins the show. But we should also mention Nate Diaz versus Hamzat Chemaev. Apparently booked. It's I, 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 Via I, Brett Okamoto, it's official. 
see it's official but i also want to say knock on wood because it's a diaz brother he says it's verbally agreed to mm. which doesn't mean contracts are signed but they said it's going to be a main event ufc 279 september 10th yep. five round fight pretty crazy pretty crazy that this is the fight that finally came to fruition after hearing about it for months also so the Since, one thing, what february yeah i think so so basically on both ends uh hams that i believe or someone like it was he got had to get like uh Maybe it was his manager or something, and they get translated from Swedish, I guess. But it's basically saying, I'm looking forward to being like Nate Diaz's UFC funeral. And then there was a quote from, I guess it's Nate's manager, who basically said, like, because people were already kind of saying, oh, he's going to pull out, whatever. It was saying his manager basically said, this is the fight he's been asking for since April. That's crazy. I mean, he if he wants it, I don't. I mean, we know he's been asking for it from Twitter. He's been I asking guess. for a fight forever, and he wants he clearly wants out of this UFC contract bad. Clearly, what he said on Wani show that literally they offered him the most money pretty much in the history of the UFC besides McGregor. Yeah. And he, he still didn't want it. So, I mean, he clearly wants out of the UFC contract. I don't see him pulling out unless some, obviously with injury or something happened, God forbid, but he wants out of the contract. This is the way out. Like true. Got his fight. And is what it is. What it is. I mean, there's no way he resigns, right? I don't, th I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it. I say no way. Yeah. I mean, we saw, Dana's reaction on when he had the UFC Long Island press conference on Saturday yeah. where he he that he was a reporter. Yeah, he was <laughs> very mad even being asked about it, which I mean, we love Dana, but I think it's fair to ask about Nate Diaz because he is one of the biggest names in the history. We've done it. We've know? done it. Yeah. So but we'll see. And but maybe Dana, like, you know, I think of Dana as a showman. Maybe he was doing that knowing they were going to announce it this week and he was going to get his name more in and mm. then. But also, yeah, they're giving him, like, the like the final boss kind of, where it's like, yeah, okay, you want out of this contract, you're gonna fight a killer, and but it's gonna, it's gonna be Nate Diaz against Hamza. It's gonna be sick. Like Hamza's Hamza, a minus 1100 favorite. He opened as that's. I predicted a thousand. I was close. Very close. I. Is it crazy that like I'm very excited for a fight where there's a favorite like that yeah no, because I'm oh, no, saying, no, it's I meant not, no, crazy. Yeah. I've, I've, not crazy like, i was getting tweets about it and i'm like i disagree like i'm couldn't be more excited yeah I'm and i think this. it's gonna be very one-sided oh agreed yeah but also like can hamzat knock out nate diaz we were talking about it well, right I, before i was we went saying live, like, like i don't think i don't think nate's ever been submitted Exactly. Like, yeah. like do you think he's gonna be able to overwhelm him enough to get a submission exactly there's so many there it's minus 1100. But what's he going to be inside this distance? Questions minus this fight. I think 150. Get, no, I was going to say he's inside this is minus like 600. I mean, in, I in guess a, that's in a, a five yeah. rounder. But Nate just doesn't get finished. He finds a way to survive. He has though before. Yeah, but he but he, he has, usually like does times. It. I think usually does. It. Only the Josh Thompson head kick and then yeah the 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 BMF was a, a doctor doctor stoppage. stoppage. So not where he felt like he was almost coming back in that fight in a weird way. That was weird. I he really was he was getting dominated, yeah. and people were saying like, "How could he stop it?" It was right before Nate Diaz was about to go Nate Diaz, which is fair. But also, Jorge doesn't really get Jorge only gets finished by like the most perfect punch ever thrown in the UFC <laughs> yeah. by Kamaru. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, he's uh, we got him here, which is great. But yeah, last note on that before we get into the interview, uh, or maybe that's. Anyways, he's working on it. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. It will be a good build up. Um, Hamzat, his English is getting better too. Like I think his trash talk will be kind of like a beat. Do a press conference. Yep, big press oh, tour. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be like if we're not ready. If you're not fired up for this, I mean, what are you gonna get fired up for? Like, yeah, he's minus eleven hundred, but who knows they're they're transitioning hamzat into being the next star in the ufc yeah, yeah. that's truly what they're trying he to does do. crazy numbers because i know dana's big thing he always goes back to like the social numbers like instagram face off shit. numbers instagram they do i mean hamza does insane numbers and nate does too i think that's where people yeah i'm seeing some other people basically being like they're not excited for this fight we just talked about it for a second where is it going to do buys i think it's going to do an insane amount of buys i'm going to say insane i'm not talking like mcgregor numbers but I think people are sleeping on like how much of a star Nate is and how like I like I love Nate. Be the I don't top bought UFC pay per view of the year, if I had to guess. I think I it's gonna be up. Does the I think it's gonna be fight. up there. I think so well, too. John comes back. John will do yeah. big. I think John. Is, John and Ganu would do insane numbers. John's John's insane. I think John is a guy that gets people that you don't. He's almost a Floyd esque. It's like no, it's a fight night. But maybe but, but you know, Nate is kind of like that too. Like, I think people that You're don't true, watch true, every true, UFC true, true, true. card, when Nate fights, they watch. 
I was just going to look up Hamzat. people that have that. I think like O'Malley's starting to develop that with the yep. young crowd where people, they just want to see him fight. I mean, Hamzat They're has 4 normal. million followers on Instagram. That's He's a, a huge a... star. He does, I think. The, oh, he put it up on his Instagram. The, the combo of Hamzat and Nate Diaz, oh, yeah. I think, is going to do very, very well. I also think knowing that there's a chance that this fight cannot be a great fight itself fight, I think they're going to make a great co-main event, whether I, if they do something crazy, like do like a, like a Poirier Chandler or like something like that. Sick. Do like I think they're going to do some way, or maybe, maybe even they do like a Poirier Colby. Yeah. Like I think they're going to make the, the co-main event a massive fight as well to pair with it because obviously it's not a, it's not a title fight. But then, the main event. but then if, Colby beats Poirier or whoever, and then Hamza beats Nate. That then makes for a massive fight between. There you the go, two. and they're on the same like kind of track. They fought the same yeah. day, and it and then like Colby will just say something insane after he fights if he wins. But then if Poirier wins, then he's back too, kind of. Like, who knows? But if Poirier won, I mean, he can end up getting like Usman. Exactly, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Which like is crazy. crazy. I, I mean, Colby Colby will be a massive, massive favorite. Now. But I'm by no means am I saying Poirier is going to win the fight. I'm just saying if. So yeah, how it happened, he would be. I mean, you literally just beat the clear number one contender. Yeah, so that that fight is like seven weeks away. Like, so it's it's not like that much time. They're gonna have, if they're gonna put together a, a great card for it, they're gonna have to do it very quickly. I'm sure they put together a lot of it already. Well, I already we saw, if you saw if you saw Poirier tweeted yesterday something fake news. I didn't even see what happened, but there was some sort of fight. Obviously, must have been rumored about him. Mm. Um, our guest has now joined the screen. We could add him on now from Bellator's card this week, this Friday, Roman Feraldo. What's going on, fellas and ladies? What's ladies? up? No, it's just fellas here. Do you think I'm a chick? Because of the hair? You can't. Oh, Are we you, can't hear you. you. Your, you might be blocking your mic. Hold on, let me see. Better? Yeah, I yeah. can hear you now. Better. We're getting some feedback. Huh? What just go? Um, how are you doing, man? You're only a couple days out from the fight. We were talking about the UFC fights on Saturday. Bellator's got a card on Friday, so it's even mm -hmm. a night earlier. Yeah. No, man, I'm feeling good. Um, weight's on point. Um, you know, right now it's just about maintaining where I'm at and, you know, keeping a good attitude and just ready to perform again, man. Friday, I'm just looking forward to getting in there and going to work, getting another dub, cashing a check, and heading home and seeing my family are you a guy who feels pressure going into a fight anxiety going into a fight at all i mean seven knockouts seven seven finishes it's it's really impressive mm -hmm. uh i mean yeah i think i think everybody has nerves I, I, if somebody tells you they don't have nerves i think they're full of shit um but you know a big thing for me is just you know reminding myself it's like man what really got me the knockouts and what you know has led to all my success is just go out there and, you know, don't worry about winning or losing. Just go out there and just leave it all out there, bro. Fight, fight, leave every bit in the cage. Fight with all everything I got. And uh, it's worked out in my favor up to this point. I would say having these, like, all these, like, highlight reel knockouts, obviously the point in the knee went crazy viral. That was insane. The last yeah. fight I was talking about before, how, much, how insane your power is. You basically, your last fight, I know there was some ground to pound to finish out, but you pretty much knocked the guy out with a jab. Is there yeah. like a, is there like more pressure that you've had all these big knockouts? Is there more pressure to keep knocking guys out, or I, you kind of just mentioned about like just getting the win? Or are you, obviously, are you looking to knock guys out? I mean, I, so there's definitely pressure to go out there and continue to knock people out. You know, it's not necessarily for everyone else. It's more so inflicted on myself. Like, I be, I know what I'm capable of. So, you know, if I do, you know, if I fight up to my my standard. I, I think I can knock anyone out in the world. I think I could beat anyone in the world at 170. Um, so it's more so just the reassurance of me just putting in the work, the heart, you know, going in there, being disciplined, busting my ass in the gym. And um, when I do that, um, I kind of ease that anxiety in a sense. And I just go in there and be like, look, you're prepared. Go out there and fight your fight and everything, you know, let it, let the chips fall where they fall. With obviously the viral – the probably the most viral MMA clip of last year. Did you realize you were pointing at him when you did it? Or was it Yo, kind of just like your body just like took over or whatever? A little, a, a little bit instinctual, you know, like yeah. ultra instinct, you know, some Goku moment stuff. But it was yeah. also, yeah. you know, it was uh, a little bit of both, man. Like I, I knew I caught him. I, I had set that, that left hook up and 
I know when I touch people with my left, like the left hand is the right hand. I can knock anybody out with the right hand too, but the left foot is, I think sets me apart from a lot of guys. And um, I knew when I caught him, I clipped him. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it was more so. I don't know if you've ever like watched your buddy spar or whatever, but you and then in the gym, you see somebody get clipped. Like, oh, I felt that in the ring for him. I was like, oh, I got you, dude. I'm coming. I'm coming. It, it awesome. was funny. It was funny in that moment. I clipped him and I said, I got you. And then my dude, uh, Sleek Sheik, Sabat, sitting there on uh, ringside. And he's like, get after him. And like, <laughs> my, eyes, <laughs> my eyes don't invert to him, but I'm like, I'm coming. I'm coming. Like, I, you know, like, you know, it was, it was a dope. It was, it was a good experience. Someone's like was, moving in slow motion. I, well, I was going to say, Everything. Nate, Nate, somebody yelling at him like that in his fight with, with Leon yeah. Edwards. Yeah. He yeah, might have got the finish if someone's like, yo, go get him now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm just get after him, bro. I got it. I got it. I'm taking my time. Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> and it's funny to hear you say that, like, oh, I got to get after him because then you decided to throw, like, the most savage strike of all time. Yeah. You know, just, all right, take your time, slow and steady, wham, right up the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I would go, like a crazy, a crazy, like, almost like a switch knee like that. How much are you drilling that? I'm always curious that. I know when you work on Masvidal, I know, like, obviously he had landed the probably the most famous knee of all time. Like, how yeah. much are you actually, like, in, like, camp and, like, practice, like, working on like a big like switch knee like that so i'll say this um our george's um jorge's striking coach is the same as mine so you know i train with george a lot but really where where both of our striking like uh, like i said knowledge and experience comes from comes from paulino hernandez he's the mastermind man he's the magic man um and when i'm with him i'm with him two to three times a week and you know we're doing anywhere from eight to twelve rounds at a time and um, each round is broken down to what we're going to work on. So if I can give you like an actual like, I guess, like baseline, we're working, you know, special moves, you know, any any kind of like, you know, special move that you say, flying knee, spinning heel kicks, these these uh, highlight type, you know, strikes. We do we'll do like, you know, anywhere two to three rounds of that, you know, three times a week. So, we you know, it's it's consistent and, uh, and it's not a it's not a fluke. In any sense, I saw you drinking that Pedialyte. Is that a fight week special? Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah, you gotta. Right now, it's uh, you know, just watching the food. I, I have a I have a really easy cut, man. I I'm very mm -hmm. fortunate, and I and I think a lot of guys it pisses them off because of how easy my cuts go. Uh, it's kind of a joke to me. One set, I walk around. I mean, I know a lot of one seventies who walk around pretty heavy, but. I don't, I mean, I fight pretty close to my weight and, um, you know, just staying hydrated, you know, I'll, uh, eat a little bit here. I'm after we get off, I'm going to go eat a little meal. I did a little sweat this morning, broke a little sweat this morning. So go eat a little food, chill out, and then we'll get the rest off Thursday morning. Like tomorrow we'll like do the same thing, same process. And, um, but for me, it's real chill, man. I, I enjoy what I do. So a big thing for me, I was actually just talking to Dalton about this is like, you know, I got into fighting cause I love it. All right. I enjoy being here. So let's not make it fucking miserable by doing some extreme diet and, you know, counting micro and micro nutrients and fuck all that shit, dude. I eat. If I'm hungry. If I'm hungry, I'm eating. I'm, I'm going to go get some sushi right now. Like, no bullshit. I'm going to go get some sushi. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to hang out with my, my coaches and my corners. I'm going to vibe. I'm going to enjoy myself. And then on Friday, I'm going to go knock this dude the fuck out. Excuse my language, but, you know, it's like. Oh, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can no, no, let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's. That's, 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 you know, for the, for the most part, that's how I, that's, that's my camp, bro. I, I enjoy being in camp. I enjoy fighting. I enjoy the lifestyle that I have. And that's been my, my whole mentality. Like if I'm going to do this, I'm going to fucking do it at the highest level. And I'm going to do it with a smile on my face every step of the way. And, um, uh, it's worked out. Any, uh, any Masvidal influence in that? Cause obviously he was a guy who fought at 155 for a while and then had more success at 170. Mm -hmm. Is that like him? Is there any like that influence on that? Like working with him? Yo, big time, man. I mean, um, shit. I mean, my, there ain't nobody a bigger foodie than Masvidal, bro. That guy can eat. <laughs> um, <laughs> that dude. That listen, you talk about food, bro. That where you want to go? Well, I, mean, I, I got a Thai place. I got a you know Korean place. I got a Cuban <laughs> place. I got an Italian place. I got bro. What do you want? You tell me what you want. And I'll I'll give you the spot. So, but um. No, hundred percent, man. He's been a he's been a giant influence, you know, even before I even like actually started my amateur career. I mean, I remember being like twelve years old and 
watching before i even knew what youtube was dude like yo go to youtube like what the fuck's youtube like you know <laughs> <laughs> you know i remember watching him in the backyards and like dude i just just legit being like yo what a dog and um then like the surreal the surreal like full circle story where i ended up my cousin Juan carlos who was george's uh strength conditioning for a while um introduces me to paulino and you know i just like all of a sudden now i'm you know uh, not only sharing the maths, but I'm training with, in a sense, you know, one of the guys I used to idolize as a kid. And, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty surreal full circle story. And I'm just, I'm just taking it in for what it is. I'm just like, man, this is, that's, that's what you get for following your fucking heart in a sense. Not getting too, not getting too emotional over here, you know, no, no small violins, but it was, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a hell of a journey far from over. Oh, sure. I'm yeah. sure. When did that journey like begin in the sense of when did you fall in love with fighting? You said you're still in love with like when was yeah. that? Andre Arlovsky versus Tim Silva. I walked into the living room while that fight was going on and Andre just looked like a fucking wolf man. You know, the hair, the fangs. He goes in there and clips clips Tim, throws him the heel hook and wins the interim belt. And I mean, full circle with that, that's the guy who like got me into it. And he trains with uh, Paulino as well. So I'm like, dude, I got wow. this like layers, like, you know, <laughs> like it's, it's wild. But um, yeah, that was the first time I ever actually seen mixed martial arts. And I was like, dude, I remember being a big fan of like WWE, dude. I was like Undertaker, Kane, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, you know, Mr. Uh, you know, uh, oh, the Nature Boy. I was across the board, uh, Degeneration X. I was like all into the in entertainment business of fighting and then i seen real fighting and i was like fuck that i want to go do what they're doing that, that's some real shit like that's that's what clicked in my head like i want the real i want the realness i want like no choreographed i want to i want there to be stakes you know and um i seen andre do that and he just the persona of him at that time was like larger than life and i was like dude i gotta figure out a way to get into this and key west being from key west it's there's no it's small bro key west is a as it's a pirate island, man. People used to run rum and, and smuggle drugs out of there, you know. So all people really do down there is you either work on a boat or you work some construction job or so it really wasn't much that I can as far as like pursue. But we had a we had a boxing gym down there. Um, my dude uh, uh Ricky Jackson I trained with for a while. I mean, you know, my first boxing coach ever. He was, that's my man. He's actually he'll be at the fights. It's my dude. And um I just figured out a way to get into anything and everything I could to like help me pursue what I was doing, even at his young age. And, you know, as a kid, you know, your passions change in and out, but I always loved fighting. And, uh, when I had the ability to really like pursue it in college, I got a scholarship for rugby and, um, I had a couple of buddies, uh, I shouldn't say a couple, but I had a buddy of mine who was getting into amateur and he's like, just like any other, you know, homie other he's like, yo, I bet you I'll kick your ass. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's like not a fucking chance so we went to the gym and i trained i signed up and i just it's taken off from there when was the when was the moment that you realized you just had this like god-given knockout power i don't know man um I, I that's that's a hard one i think i probably when i was like 16 after, <laughs> wow I was, after, yeah i was like 16 and i got in a, i got in a little i got an altercation with this with this dude he was you know grown man 220 fucking yoked and um you know i was like yo you better fucking if you're gonna fight this dude you better take off on him and i i one shot at him just slept him wow. and it was like caught <laughs> 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 him on the button dude and then i turned and started fighting with his friend and all of a sudden there's this fucking uproar and like we get the fuck out of here dude security is kicking us out and we just took off and uh, then I was like, dude, I fucking smoked that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you sit in your room by yourself after you just start looking at yeah. him. Like, Damn. Yeah, like, I was like, the fucking money maker right here, dude. I can do this shit. And that's then, awesome. Uh, you know, and then obviously, you know, you're getting, you're getting the street fights throughout time and time. And and uh, through college, I got in plenty of them. And I, I would say, I guess, I guess uh, when I really knew I could, like, fuck some people up is when I was in college and I was – Dude, I got in a, I got in a bar fight where I had like there was like two or three dudes or it was it was like it was like five guys but my other dude my other couple of buddies fought the two guys and I fought the three guys 
and I just slept one after another. And I was like, yo, none of these dudes are fucking with me. I, I think I need to pursue this shit. And then uh, wow. I started fighting amateur. And I remember even even going a little deeper, I, I kind of got away from it for a little bit. And uh, I remember watching some dudes boxing on, on TV. And I was like, man, I can knock both those guys out. What the fuck am I doing sitting here at a bar, working at a bar? And I just like, I gave it all up. I gave the nightlife up and I'm just fully dedicated to fighting. And after that, it was just, this is what I'm doing. Nothing's getting in my way. That's awesome. Yeah. You said you got a scholarship for rugby. Do you got any crazy rugby stories for us? Only time I've ever been knocked out. Wow. Uh, in a rugby match? In a rugby match. Only time I've ever been knocked out. I was I was actually trying out for, um, it was during my tryouts for the uh, Florida national team, the Florida juice team. So we have, you know, national youth teams. And uh, during the tryout, um, I was going to make a tackle. And at the same time I was going to make a tackle, my same teammate was going to make a tackle. And his, like, forehead hit me right on my temple, bro. Dropped because blacked out. I remember trying to, like, just remember trying to wipe something off my face. Like, something was, like, blocking my eyes. It was, like, pitch black. And all of a sudden, I was on the field. And then my eyes went closed. And then all of a sudden, I was off the field. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? I was like, yo, put me back in the game, man. <laughs> 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 and then, sure as shit, it was funny. We're on the way to the hospital. And the coach calls me. He's like, hey, I want to let you know something. You made the team. And I was like, fuck yeah. So it was worth it. It was worth it, <laughs> it, was worth it man. Yeah, that's like a classic rugby guy story. Yeah. Like, yeah, put me yeah. back in the game no matter what. Yeah. No matter what, yeah, dude. Like, uh, you like root for Alexander Volkanovsky as another like rugby guy, I'm a May guy. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Like, I, when I heard that he played rugby and like he was, you know, he, he was, a, he was a scrummy, but like when I heard he played rugby, I was like, dude, you're on my, um, you're on my, uh, you're on my fan. I'm a fan. Uh, I was, I was kind of, it was kind of a, a little bit hard because I was always a fan of Max. You know, I love oh, Max's yeah. style, you know, it is what it is, bro. Let's just go bang it out and call it what it is. Um, but the guy's a true champion. You can't take it away. And that's three, three, no against three, no against, you know, probably one of the best uh, featherweights in the world. You can't deny it. The guy's a, the guy's a true champion. So big fan. What's, of his. A, what's a scrummy is what did you call yeah. Volcano? a scrummy? A scrummy. What's so that? He's like the best, the best way to compare it. He'd be like the quarterback. Oh, he was like the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. So wait, yeah. he wasn't getting hit or anything. No, no, they get hit. Everybody gets hit. But oh, basically, okay. yeah. 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 no, no, but like they're like protected, like a little bit, but not ball? really. He's running down the. He, what he's gonna do is he's gonna get the ball out of the ruck, and he's gonna take it down the line, and then pitch it down the line to all his wingers and shit, and they're gonna run down the field, and uh, uh, yeah. So he he's uh, basically kind of dictating where the where what direction and where the ball's going. If he's gonna punch it forward or pitch it down the line, pretty cool. I love rugby, man. That shit was. I just like the. I mean. The intensity in rugby, bro, was 90 minutes nonstop. You're fucking going, you know, and uh, I, have, I have some pretty good memories. But I will say it's funny, man. Like, the, the times that I've been hurt the most in my life weren't in fighting. They were doing shit like rugby and lifting weights and shit. It's wild. I got I, – I lined up with this, like – I don't even know the fucking refrigerator. This guy was a straight up, straight up bending machine. And uh, he gets the ball, and I'm like, yo, I, he, like, what do you do? You get out of the way or you stay? And I'm like, yo, I'm not getting out of the way. Dude, my whole right side went numb, dude. I hit him and, like, like legit lost feeling on my right side. I was like, yeah, damn. That was bad. <laughs> but it's, it's good, dude. I, I enjoyed every minute of it, man. That's absolutely insane. The Happy. right side of your body going numb. That sounds Happy. like a nightmare. Dude, dude, he, like, like. I pinched something in my neck. So when I hit him, because I you drop your shoulder, you're not supposed to lead. It's a little different than football. You don't lead with your head in rugby. So you lead with your shoulder. And when when I hit him, bro, like, dude, it just like I it killed a fucking nerve. I know, like, it just boom, the whole side went numb. I was like, yo, I can't lift my right arm right now. And then, sure as shit, I circled back around and got in line and waiting for the next tackle. And I made the next tackle. <laughs> Damn. I don't know how. No. I'll send y'all the video. It's fucking epic. But, oh uh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Please. Please. Yeah, 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 dude. It's epic, man. I had I had a lot of good times in, in that sport, dude. And it's just it's a got to be a tough motherfucker. You know who also does rugby is um uh Cosmo Alexander. Oh really? Yeah, bro, beast, beast. Do you guys ever like get together? Uh, I never had the chance to play with him because he's out in Naples. But um, when I was when I was under uh, Jay Z Cavalcante and Daniel Mendez, that's how I met Cosmo Alexander. So I was training under Daniel Mendez 
and Jason Cavalcante for a long time, for a few years. And um, when I was under them, you know, they had the connections with Cosmo from like the Black Zillions and shit. And um, by the way, I, you know, I didn't know about all the beef and shit because I'm from way down south. I come up here, I'm training one people, and then all of a sudden, like, no, no, you know, ATT and Black Zillions, and there's all this fucking beef and shit. And I'm like, bro, I ain't in the middle of that shit, guy. I'm just trying to get some good training in. But uh, it was uh, it was a good experience for me. And he, I mean, amazing kickboxer. Obviously, seven time Muay Thai champion. That guy's a, a true, true killer, true assassin. But um, he was a yeah, good rugby player. Loved the shit. And um, yeah, got, got a few guys, got a few guys in the MMA world who come from rugby. I think we should put together an MMA rugby match somehow. Imagine that. You could take For guys charity. that have never played as well, yeah. and that could be the first like cross promotion. We'll get UFC, Bellator, one. Or EFL, get everyone if you could together, do it. Just make match. just make sure I'm on that list, bro. That's all I care about. Oh, you're, you're probably, well, of yeah, course, you're a captain. You're at the top yeah. of the list, yeah. You, you and Volk, the captain. Let's fucking go, dude. Let's go. <laughs> all right, best of luck on Friday. We're hoping to see another big win for you, and uh, hopefully, afterwards, you come back on the show. We'll talk about it. Hundred percent, man. I'm thinking if I can give you any kind of ink, like insight. What I'm, my gambling, plan please, is please. my plan is to, to go in there and uh, touch them up a little bit, get them to extend. I actually really want to show, man. I really want to show some of my other skills in here because everybody's calling me just a striker in this, you know. And it's like I, my game has evolved so much, you know. Being being at the gym that I'm at now with HT, having the partners that I got, you know, one of my main training partners, Johnny Eblen. Um, you know, got, I know Michelle, got yeah. great. dude, what a fucking absolutely shut out Musasi. And this is the guy who I'm working with consistently. And I'm like, dude, I, I know I have the ability, like working with him, working my wrestling, just working different positions. Yeah, I've been able to, you know, we've been able to exchange information and, you know, that's what the sport's all about. Just trying to grow and get better. And you get the right people around you. It's like, it makes your game, you know, just elevate so fast. And, um, uh, I think people are going to be really shook to see that I'm not just a striker, man. I really want to go out here and, and show some show some skills, but I hate to say it, man. I don't think the guy, I think his name's Luis. I don't think he has the ability to go pass around with me. I think after I touch him a couple of times, he's just going to fold, but who knows? I mean, then again, you know, I, I'm not taking nothing if I'm not, I'm not underestimating him, but I just know my ability to, I could, I could put anybody to sleep at any time, but I really do want to go out here and show some skills. If I can, I'm going to get a take down, you know, work him a little bit, uh, beat him up. If the submissions there. I'll take it. But yeah, I don't think the fight's going past one round. There you go. Write it down. Roman Feraldo inside one round. Thank you All for right. joining the show. We really appreciate the time. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you guys. There you have it. Inside one round. That's the bet. Oh, I'll be betting it for sure. Yeah, of course. You have to now. Nah, because if, if if that hits and you didn't bet it, it's like, how could I not? He said also, it on our his, show. I mean, his resume, he just delivers knockouts. Yeah. That's just what he great does. Great guests. Two great guests today. Thank you to Matt Schnell. Thank you to Mincy for hooking it up. Roman Feraldo for joining the show. You know, both of them are great. Two Feraldo, great today. Feraldo was. Uh, he's electric. You he's electric. Really, yeah. Yeah. He, great he, person. He's going to be a big star. I mean, yeah, if he keeps doing what he did last few times. I mean, this is gonna be his fifth fight in Bellator too. Yep, he's four, he's seven and zero total. He's, I also he had a pretty good like amateur too, like with his amateur, he's undefeated. All, yeah, he had a couple of I know he had a couple of decisions as amateur, but as a pro, all knockouts. And he said he got away from it for a little bit, then yeah. got back into it while he's an amateur and everything. Um, should we talk a little bit about UFC Long Island now? Yeah, for sure. We were there. It was the first time that the four of us were all actually at UFC yeah. together. It was fun. It was sick. Um, we actually, I don't. Our sections, we were the only people, and we were in. Yeah, we had like two full rows. Yeah, we almost had a suite. It was sick, <laughs> pretty much. That's what people were trying to say, like clown the tickets, whatever. Crazy. But they we, were. I, I mean, be, be, yeah. Like, I mean, we were lower bowl. Like, what do they want? That, those they, those they seats. Like, also, sick. also, our seats were a few rows up, and we stayed there because we just had like our own yeah. literally section. But they, also, it was they like, were saying they're calling them nosebleeds, lower bowl. Or... We literally, we literally were a hundred levels. Yeah. We had a, another guy come and sit with us who was works at Barstool. Uh, his name's. You may know him, Travi, for the boys, but he paid like two hundred fifty dollars for those tickets. Oh, really? Yeah, they, it was. Ex they were expensive yeah. tickets, and also I mean, I mean, top gate of all time. Like top gate of all time, and I, I mean, I like the seats. They were great seats. Like obviously, yeah. If someone's like, you want to sit cage side, I'd be like, yeah, of course. But those were six seats. They were six. So what should we should we start with? Like the beginning of the card, go all the way down, and should we go through highlights? I mean, obviously the main event, Ortega, Yair. 
very underwhelming when the finish to that fight is someone's shoulder popping out. Me and Ev did point out the last two fighters we were around lost a fight in a very awkward way like that. Yeah, tough. Anthony Pettis, Brian Ortega, tough. And you know what's really tough? I was saying right before the Ortega fight, we really haven't been around a UFC guy or, or interviewed a UFC guy that has lost. Oh, yeah. Because Jacoby happened right then. Rondage. Shout out to our guy, Dustin Jacoby. I mean, yes, big shout out. Huge what a, like, knockout. Hammer well play. Yeah. On Jacoby lands the big first round knockout. People but, said early stoppage. I think he was out. Of but it. I'll say this too. Obviously, like, listen, Young, he lifted his head up fast and his body fast. When he stood up, he was stumbling around. Yeah. I think I think Jacoby goes lands one big one. It's like it's a wrap. Yeah. And he showed good restraint, not throwing an H bomb. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also that shows it's weird. It's like if you hit it, somebody right here, yeah. it's almost better. It's like it really shuts off their body there for a second. Instead of right here, you think about knockouts right here, but he hit him in the back. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that showed Jacoby's true power, which we I mean, he's kind of a decision guy, but he he went in there, Brundage was with him. And Absolutely, that was sick. Yeah. And I think uh, we tried to get him on the show, but I think they're out partying in the, on, in the Ozarks. Which... He, he said we'll definitely get him on the show soon, link up. Sure. He's definitely down. But, yeah, he's celebrating that win, as he should. Being a fan of his, I was happy for him, too, because I think he needed a win like that on the big stage. Like yeah. He had been 15 ranked, where I think the buzz wasn't matching. Like he's, I think he's like 8-0-1 in the UFC. or like is. 7-0-1. Yeah. Yeah. Something like a crate. Like he literally has not lost like seven fight win streak. Yeah. So I mean, I was glad to see him get a big like highlight reel knockout like that on a big stage, big card. Because now he's fourteen. He was in early the in the card too. Like the place, yeah. like it, it was a good like pop to bring up the energy and all yeah. that. Like people were like, it's one of those. Oh, we're at fucking UFC. Yeah. Like this huge, is awesome. Huge. Because it kind of it sort of came out of nowhere. Like they were yeah. they were exchanging, kind of like finding each other's like range, feeling each other out. It was almost just, like it looked like he was almost having trouble getting in, and then that's all of a sudden it was he the, wasn't. Well, we were talking about in the crowd that it was kind of the first. He's a he's a big light heavyweight. Yeah. And it was the first time he fought a light heavyweight in the UFC that was definitely bigger than him. Young was. Jung's huge. Jung's like a skyscraper. He looked, he looked massive yeah. next to him in the UFC. Jung's going to be a guy that will be back. You get caught sometimes. For sure. And, but his size. He's, yeah. He looked enormous. The line movement on it was very interesting because uh, Jacoby was the favorite at minus 130. And then it just. He flipped. got up to even like 145. And then um, he ends up being, he was plus money. Uh, yeah. I guess I was talking to somebody. Um, I guess that had to do with like just a poker player in Vegas. Just uh, he likes betting on UFC. He's, he's, loaded on he's not yeah. he's not particularly like the sharpest guy, but he thought he had a good read on. He is a sharp, like a very sharp poker player. But and then I guess so that just goes to show sometimes like those massive line movements aren't necessarily like, oh, the sharp money is the right money. Sometimes it's just a guy who has a lot of money and moves yeah. the market, specifically with the Jacoby Don Jung early in the week. If you get like 20, 25, 50K down, it's going to move the line because it's sure. because like not a lot of people are betting in advance of that fight. But it was I like how UFC is kind of stacking these cards recently. Like uh, instead of it's like, oh, why is this not? Why is this the third or fourth fight of the night? But it kind of gives you, you watch the whole the thing. Whole thing yeah. And we said that uh, two we two weeks ago when Ronnie Lawrence fought uh, fought Kakramanov yeah, first, and it was like, oh, why isn't this on the main card? But now it's just like, no, you have to watch the whole thing. And it really is like becoming more and more like the prelims are just like it's one big fight night. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's like prelims aren't shitty fights like they are in boxing sometimes, like the weird mismatches to get yes. people's records up or whatever. And we also saw Jacoby's family was like sitting in front of us. Yeah, there was another thing that was just that was cool. Awesome. Like to see a family going nuts after their guy wins, always cool. In the That's got to be sick. Um, like just unfortunately, being Michelle Watterson Gomez did not get to see her family celebrate yeah. in the same way. Neither did Misha Tate. No, where it was bringing your daughter to work a uh, bad luck charm yeah for fighters at UFC Long Island quite possibly yeah Misha's was tough man that was a Misha just looked like overmatched yeah she yeah she just didn't have it she no. just I think Lauren Murphy's her. crowd was chanting Misha huge I think Lauren Murphy's just may actually be decent well like, I, th I think what it is Misha Tate obviously is the bigger name I mean Lauren Murphy literally her last fight was losing a fight to Valentina Shevchenko yeah where she got yeah. finished in the fourth round but I mean Shevchenko is a monster of course and she yeah. gave her comp like I, I don't think she was gonna win the fight or anything at any point but i mean she was like hanging in there with her late into the fight like giving her competition so i mean lauren murphy's i think she actually they gave her the bump she's in the women's pound for pound now yeah. i just looked at the red the new rankings uh this morning she deserves it yeah no for sure i mean absolutely i and mean she beating was, me should take like that was impressive and she, she looked, was she looked a lot faster 
Yeah. Oh, definitely. Against Valentina. De- definitely. And uh, there was just times where it felt like Misha was like, okay, your striking is a little bit faster than mine. I'm going to try to take it down. And she was just like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, she couldn't. She really couldn't. And Misha, it was, it was too bad. Uh, I would have loved to see her win. But I think like her time's not finished. Michelle Watterson said she's her time's not finished either. So both of them seem to be. You could find fights for them that makes sense. Yeah, we were talking about, uh, who was it? Calderwood or her. Her, her Wood, name's just no. one now because Wood, of, yeah. which is funny that That's she crazy. married somebody yeah, that, that, yeah. But she was somebody, she's taking some time off. But UFC usually, like, if you win a few times in the female division, you're going to stick around for a while, especially if especially you're, if you get fans. If you have fans and you have, like, you're easy to work with. I'm sure UFC appreciates yeah. people that make weight. They come in, they do their, uh, like, journalist obligations, interviews, whatnot, and then they fight. And sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Um, good point by Rand K in the chat. Ducate almost started the night with a leg kick TKO. And I was saying to you guys, I mean, cringe city every time I see a leg kick after Molly was, did what she, she did to me. She was blasting that leg. <laughs> yeah. I, think I mean, she was, be... she was dumping on it. Penne was just hopping on it. I, I would... wonder how that knee feels today. Oh, God, it was like brutal. 49 leg kicks ended up oh, being. Just hammering it. I mean, and kudos to her. Like, she saw she was hurt and just kept. Hammered it, hammered it, hammered it. And the Penny was almost crowded, like, it, like, oh, more and more. Penny was almost one. like throwing the leg, just just like throwing that leg, like using the kicks, just so she wouldn't get kicked. To get, yeah, it was like a. So uh, he was like keeping her all. Like, it's dodge. like, yeah, just keep it, like, keep putting up and down, up and down, so I wasn't getting hit with it. Yeah. What were the other highlights? Ricky of, of Simone. The card? Simone That's, was, oh, that was unbelievable. Of Gotta course. give credit to him. Un, un, unbelievable. I mean, he called out Sean O'Malley afterwards. Great call out. Yeah. Honestly, I would say borderline ran through jack shore yeah yeah like clearly won the first round in my opinion and then like even like has the like getting the takedowns on him yeah lands the big shot that hurts him and then finishes him with the submission really impressive i mean he needs his next fight needs to be a big fight to finish jack shore yeah i mean and do it in that fashion too like hurt him on the feet I mean, submit him O'Malley at msg would be sick that would be yeah, awesome for, yeah i wonder if they could turn that around i almost Probably. don't think o'malley to be honest i don't think he would want it you don't think you'd want some? I, I think there's a chance he. he would. I'm not saying he definitely wouldn't take it. That fight's bigger though than than Moon than fighting Munoz again. I think that no, I don't think he's gonna fight Munoz again. No point. Yeah. He, like he's in a weird spot where I mean, like I, I almost think fun. they could give him someone like bigger. O'Malley, just because his name, like his name, is so big. But like, does he want someone that big? Also, the, he the, seems very serious about wanting Jan. I don't know if that fight's gonna happen. How old is O'Malley? Too. How old 20, is he? Like 26, 27. The thing is, it's like. I mean, I get it. Maybe he really he feels it's time to go, but sometimes it's, you know, it's oh, the only thing is it's like if you're gonna fight a caliber opponent like Ricky Simone, you'd probably want a bigger name. That's what I'm saying. He yeah. wants like a Yan, like because yeah. if he loses to Yan, he can be like whatever. But oh, Simone, to to Simone, you don't want to lose Simone this early in the game. Even even yeah. if we were like, oh, it's not that and, big and just deal. the threat of the. I don't think you don't want the threat of getting wet blanketed. Yeah. Because I don't, he doesn't want to be in a fight like you just came, you just came off a fight that was dull and ended in a weird weird way, and then you don't want to get your next fight and all of a sudden you just get like grapple fucked like that that would yeah. suck. Simone's it's Simone's of that. a is a unit for he's, a big, he's thick for his size, how tall he is, and how much he weighs. I mean that guy's a truck. But I will say in O'Malley's behalf, the fight when he fought Matino, he said yes to Simone. And Simone said that he would only do it I remember one, that. Yeah. at 145. Yeah. And then he, Malley's like, I've had a band away camp. Like, I'm not just yeah. going 145 I remember that. for you. Yeah. So he did say yes to him in the past, just not at Simone. Just and it was on short notice, it right? Was, it was short notice. Yeah. But he did say yes. So I will defend him in that way. Um, Burgos Jordan. People yeah. were mad about this. Yeah, decision. people were very mad. I Gotta think it was, it. I, so obviously I'm a Burgos guy. I think it was a little less of a robbery than the, and I'll, that people are saying, and I'll say why. The first round was a coin flip. Of course. I think the first round was a coin flip. A lot of people were – came down to. And they leaned Jordan. I can see that. Second round was clear Burgos, and the third round was clear was clear uh, Jordan. And le- I understand where you look at the, the post-fight uh, stats, and it's like 130 strikes to like 30. Totally get it. But that's not how MMA scored. No. Like you – like like – even the one one of the judges gave Burgos a 10-8 round in the second round. And I don't think that was outlandish. He literally just no. he basically just like grapple fucked him. You for mentioned it an entire lots. five minutes. I remember you turned I to said me and said it's a 10-8 eight, round. Because he I don't know if Jordan landed a strike in that round. Yeah. He literally jumped on his back and had him for literally the entire five minutes. Where I think the Jordan round three was close to a 10-8. I think uh Burgos was able to salvage the last minute 
which I think took away the he like basically won the last minute of the fight after getting yeah. dominated the first four minutes of the third round. I think that saved him from getting potentially 10 eight in that round. Mm -hmm. New, New York New York judges. I had a lot of money on Burgo, so I'm not apologizing <laughs> for shit. I don't give a fuck. But I could definitely see we why in the parlay, I could see why a Jordan plus 150 better would be very upset. Yeah, I will say that I, I could see that. I want to see more in MA though that uh, Burgos that second round should be a 10 eight, and I really want to see that Jordan round three be a 10 eight more. But see, but the but him winning the last minute. No, I agree. I agree. Because like, I think when he grappled and then he even landed some good. I don't strikes. think the last. I don't think the third round was a 10-8. I don't, I, I, I don't I, think so. I think you have I don't to. Think so to not, I think to, I don't even think it was close. Either close to I'm, a finish, or oh, you have, which I, I think close to a finish or complete. And close total to a domination. finish. I think close to a like finish. One hundred percent. Third round, a little bit up for debate. If you know Burgos, you know how much of a chin he has. Yeah. But he was he was eating a lot of punches, no doubt. But then he took him down. But I think he took him down and then landed some good strikes in the last thirty seconds, or they took him down with a minute. And landed some good strikes in the last 30 seconds. Like, basically, in my opinion, won that last minute. And I think you can't, like, win a minute of a round and then basically and then get 10 8 10 8 has to be a, a complete domination of that round. The it, only 10 8 I saw was the second round. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If, if Jordan, though, it, can we, if Jordan, though, didn't get grappled for that last minute, that's a completely different It was close. Story it could have, 10 8 was 8. close, real close. Because for sure. he hurt him on the feet multiple times. He wobbled him. Yes, for sure. For sure. Mm. I was impressed with how fast Jordan was. He looked very impressed. He looked so much smaller, but he had he, if he had much better hands. He did. Which, that, which was, that, and I was not expecting it. I thought I thought Burgos was going to eat. Like Burgos is always. I said it in the, in the last week. Like he's always the guy that's like going to take one to give one. He, like he has a phenomenal chin. He's known for having the seal chin. I was surprised how much better on the feet Jordan was than him. I almost was worried. That Burgos, I thought we saw almost like a different Burgos. Yeah, like I thought he didn't look nearly as well, good as he's looking. And he listen, he's t he's eaten a lot of shots say, in is his it time. Too many wars. He, he's 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 like developed a reputation like of just he's he's box office in the sense that he's never in a boring fight ever. No. And even after that was the last fight on his on his contract, and Dana was like, absolutely, we're gonna try to re up the yeah. guy. They should re up him and put him right back on MSG. Burgos, he, uh, I think they will 100. percent Burgos also said he's gonna test the free agent yeah. waters just. He was more not like a slight of the UFC. He just said, I would be like negligent to my family, not seeing what kind of money's out there for yeah. me. And it's also a smart thing to say. When oh, TJ Sterling booked Wait. official. Co-main 280. 280. I, I called it. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, Yahoo Sports. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. It's the, the Makachev uh, de Bronx is going to be the main event. Uh, Yahoo That's Sports. A card too. That's, That's a great, great card. That's That's a great card. doesn't have bad card. 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 Great card. Yeah, like the UFC just straight up doesn't book bad cards. Especially for pay per views. I yeah. wish I could give credit to who reported it. It's Two Yahoo times. Sports, I, but I don't know which report at Yahoo. Anyways, uh, TJ Pillowshaw against Aljamain. Aljamain Maybe was Kevin Ioli. What? Yeah, probably, probably Kevin Maybe, Ioli. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, but uh, yeah, Herbert. I felt bad for uh, just because it's like it's, almost had the sub early. I know. I thought he had oh, it. Man, I thought man. he had. It. I had him by sub two. I, thought, I did too. I had him round one. I thought he had the triangle in. And then, and then Soriano, was, Soriano, kind, losing the first round and then getting massive shots. He's I mean, that shot, man. the second shot that he he, he, can, he can crack. He, man. he put on him when uh, after he hurt Dolce. Oh well, yeah, the follow. -up. It was the the follow up was perfect. It was almost like uh, Fiziev's punch. On RDA mm -hmm. on the ground, just like from the side, perfect. Instead. Yeah, from he the side, it's so square. Yeah. I was on dog. You saw the way he kind of was like sort of getting on his knees, yeah. and he just went straight down after the second punch. But it didn't look like special, though. No, no, no. He, he just can he crack. lost the first round. He lost. Exactly. No, he didn't look. No, he can just crack. He but Dolce is not hard. bad. I don't think he's bad. I don't think he's bad at all. Bad. He's he a bad chin, bad. I guess. Uh, I don't think he's good. I well, really no, well, don't I, think he's good. I think there's Do a weird thing. He's a bad. It, if no. we're saying agree, bad, if he's, he's good, if he's like a bottom ten middleweight, bottom ten, you think he in is? The UFC? Yeah. All right, like, I don't think that's a crazy statement. I don't. He can't wrestle. <laughs> he, he will, yeah. Well, I mean, he's he's he so was. I mean, like he was, and I don't want to say this as a bad <laughs> thing. He was dominating Cody. He was. It was early, but he, he had him hurt for sure. And then and then he won the first I round. Think he's getting better. He's don't, getting, don't get me wrong. He's I gotten think. caught twice this year. Yeah. yeah. He's got caught and I mean which isn't good. No, <laughs> Correct. it's not good. But I not said good. not bad. 
but not bad. <laughs> he's somewhere floating in the middle right now. I th- I, I think the jury. Dude, still he's out. honestly. He's, I guess I'll he's built a little he's one of the for Lee. I, most I, I well would, built I wouldn't be guys. shocked if we didn't fight in the UFC again. Yeah, maybe one. I think if he gets another one, it's I like do I, or die. I think he's one in four. In the USC, yes, yeah, yeah. Marcus I, I, Perez, that's bad. I wouldn't Marcus be, sh- I wouldn't be shocked if this was the last fight. The more that I'm thinking I think about like it, two and three, maybe. No, yeah, one, getting one. finished the way he's finished last couple is definitely not a good look. He's probably got one more opportunity. Uh, yeah, if he right. loses another one, I think he's definitely 100. percent That's it from the UFC, at least for now. I really want to see. No, he's won twice in the UFC. He's two Has and he? four. Okay, he lost to Magomed in 2019. Then he beat uh, Daquan Townsend. He didn't no, fight in the UFC anymore. Yeah. He didn't uh, fight in 2020, 2021. He lost to uh, MAB, Mark Andre Barral, Not and great. then beat Mark Perez. And then this year, we know his two results Brundage yeah. lost. And then this past one, Soriano. We, so yeah, I mean, Dolce, I really, I was like, oh, I took him by decision. I was like, I, it was eight to one. That it's, was the side, too. Yeah. No, 100% Dolce by decision. If he decision just didn't get side. caught, but that's like a hell of a thing to say if he didn't get caught. Yeah, it's part of fighting. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, if he didn't allow that home run. Especially a guy like Puna, like he has the knockout yeah, power. Yeah, of course. That's why it was eight to one decision. In life. What else on Long Island worth mentioning? Uh, leech. Oh, the Leech. Yo, my guy. Yeah. I love the yeah. Leech, man. Yeah. I hey, love bro. the Leech. Big time knockout, man. That was impressive. Yeah. Some people were claiming. I saw a few early stoppages. I don't think so. No, no, that was he that was, was a good. It, no, no, no. See, I, what I don't like is when people say the early stoppage. He obviously he hurt him twice, really bad. Then the, obviously he dro- the second time, the second time he drops him, he's raining elbows. He's just holding his arms. And I, what I don't like is when people say early stoppage. Like he kind of he reached for the leg literally after the ref jumped yeah, in and yeah, stopped yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, he gets yeah. up and then he reached for a leg and people are like, oh my god, like he like. He reached for the leg when the guy stopped him from raining elbows on his head. <laughs> yeah. Like that, obviously. The crowd whipping out the flashlights for Lemos fight. But then she had a finish. So No, but that was funny. Oh I love, like, God. that. that's just classic, like, New York. Just know yeah. how to, like, shut up. We're like, I know. <laughs> literally, if they don't immediately just start swapping leather in, like, a, two seconds, we're like, what the fuck? Like, what are you, what's going on? Somebody was yelling, like, close to our section, violence, or, like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the, one, the one guy that was like, in front of us, he's like, he was, he was furious. Yeah. Furious. He had a, he had a huge, like, <laughs> just because they felt each other out for like i turned minute. around and he was a big guy and he looked at me and i was like oh i'm turning back around because he, <laughs> he seemed like he was a little he was a little drunk he was a little like uh like i'm gonna like if you say something i'm ready to go long island's got a funny crowd because it's not like it's not all what you think it is like it's not just a bunch of like guineas no, no. like it's but long island's got but it's all like even though it's like the, you got you got like some rednecks in there you've got like the the Italian, you got like, you know what I'm talking about? But everyone kind of has the same mentality, though. Weirdly. 100%. They'll, they'll be dressed very different, look very yep. different, but the mentality is the same. Some of the some of the characters in the crowd we saw, too, wearing like the belts or the full track I saw suit. a guy where I said to Robbie, I saw a guy wearing full like gold jumpsuit kit, yeah. wearing a full a belt. That's <laughs> awesome. Wearing <laughs> a championship that. belt around his waist, it, just walking around. You're like taking that. WWE. To, yeah. Unbelievable. You're taking WWE. It was so UFC. funny. I loved it. I almost wanted to take a picture of it. There were some yeah. guys I wish I did. that had Venom, like Venom, all Venom doubt. Yeah. And I like saw them. With like the, their own last name. No. <laughs> but actually, maybe they did. I just didn't notice it. But We walked in. There was one, well, there was one guy wearing a Joanna kit. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, but it, it this was my first fight night that I went to, and it was sick, and it was, it was really awesome. Um, Young crowd too, I felt like. Yeah, for sure. Young, a lot of, like a lot of people came up to us. It was cool meeting everybody. Like, yeah, no, there was, of, there was a lot of stoolies out. Somebody sure. on the concourse said about me, "Oh, that's one of the full send guys." No, not one, <laughs> no, but close, I guess. Close, yeah, yeah. Like full send is yeah, same. Close enough. There's there's a decent amount of full send UFC shirts I saw. I t- I told you I noticed it, I noticed that the the MSG card. I was like, there is a ton. Ton of that one shirt crossover. that has just like the full send logo next to the UFC logo. Yeah, they did like the a col- they did design. like a collab t shirt. Yeah. Speaking and of collab t shirts, a death row collab on sale for forty dollars at the merch stands. Yeah. Forty dollars. I will say the only thing about the stadium was the food lines were insane. Weird, right? It was almost works. like I was like, was like a self checkout type thing, but yeah, someone has to check you out. See, I almost felt it made it faster though. In so like I feel like in, in like MSG it, it gets crazy. Yeah, maybe like I, I, when I went when I went to MSG, I didn't eat because it was outrageous. Yeah, I was strictly just drinking alcohol because I was the, they were yeah. the fastest. They cut off. It's it's always it probably depends on the arena. They cut off like right after what was it? 
the Schnell fight, and there's still three fights. And I was like, I want another drink, but that was a rookie mistake. I should have got one. It was also early in the day. It was weird, but yeah, like last call. It was like noon. It was like yeah, no, like yeah. like three o'clock. How was yeah. your guys' trip back? It was fun. I drove Ev back to the city, and then he got an Uber back to Hoboken because I was going to my brother's show in the city. Oh yeah, but it was uh. Not too bad. Not, no, not too much traffic. No, it, you know, as bad as getting out of the parking lot. Yeah, we were kind. Of, we were in like the employee parking lot because uh-huh. that's where the UFC gave us a pass to, and we were just driving around in loops. It was right next to Belmont, so one guy said like, "Don't hit any of the horses." And I was like, "What?" The <laughs> we fuck? kept thinking we were going to finesse our way out, and then we would just get to a locked gate where yeah. it was like right next to the road, and we're like, "Fuck!" And it was like a road. We with literally, no we, we literally did that like three times. Yeah. And Lee, then there was only we had to go out a certain way. Lee and I, Lee, Lee and I walked like thirty minutes. We missed the train literally by seconds. Oh. Yeah, it was literally pulling out. It was the time that we and then we oh. and then it was not an area where there was like anything to really like. You couldn't go to like a bar or anything. So we just sat on the track. There were some like Barcelona fans, so we talked with them. Oh my god! Um, there's a guy. There's a few. Guys, they were like really fucked up. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, and then Lee got into a fight on the train about this was unreal. This was such it's, a Lee was... moment. If, so we're at the point where like I had a few like a few to drink and it was like i ain't drinking like four hours so it was like almost hangover setting on <laughs> and then i'm on the train and everyone's tired it's been a long day and then i just i like no one's really talking and then i just hear lee, lee like talking i'm like is he talking with travi and then i saw travi i was like no he's not and i get off and lee is just furious at this guy and i'm just gonna let lee take over now because it's actually an interesting question which i then yelled at him about after no, this is the dumbest question of all time. No, it's not. It's the dumbest question. Yeah, he said he wanted to bet me five thousand dollars. That lot. that's such a drunk bet. Like yeah. with someone you don't yeah. know. Like that's ne- yeah. that we're on ne- that. That money's <laughs> never exchanging hands. For anybody that's confused, we were on the LAR. the f- The fight was on Long Island, Long Island Railroad, yeah. back which to is the city. close to Manhattan, but it's not like you can't walk back to Manhattan. So we were on the train and. There's a lot of UFC fans that were taking the train back to Manhattan to either go upstate or even back to Jersey. Anyways. Yeah. So we were we were just sitting there. I was talking to some guys across the sea from me about the fights. And then this dude like was just chiming in every once in a while. And then we were talking about Charles and Islam. And then he's like, yeah, I bet Connor gets the, t- the title winner. And I was like, what? I, I was I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. They call yourself like look at they that same reaction I have. Like, that's the dumbest question. That's the ever. dumbest thing. That's, I call them hardo. I call them like, such a hardo. He's number twelve. Yeah. He's that number like, twelve. Like, Connor no, no, it's Connor he's Connor no. Connor I'm not hearing this. Dude, I think it's unlikely. Then he insulted Dana. He was like, he was I think like, it's unlikely. Dana's a businessman. That's what you were saying. Oh, dude, it was a booze, man. That's yeah. what you said. You no, said, oh, you said boy. that. You we said were on that. the streets of 7th Avenue. I was like, Lee, that's not that crazy. I think that it's crazy. I think it's, crazy. Crazy. Like, I think it's unlikely. Jalen Turner should deserve the title shot oh, more than McGregor. Oh, this Islam, is crazy. Oh. Islam jumped into the cage and ambushed McGregor. If yeah. Dana is a showman like he you know, wants to be, he uses a, that in a video package, and it's like the rematch. Connor oh, landed if McGregor, last time. If, if, oh, if, if, he's not <laughs> training. He's not in USADA. He's, no, not, he, well, he's, he's, not, he's not training right now. That's he's not sure. doing anything. I don't know. I saw some videos on Instagram. He's popping oh, yeah, he's he's popping a hat. He's popping a hat. The last picture I saw him, he was smoking a joint on his butt. Yeah, <laughs> and squeezing lemon juice all over himself. But, uh, but, that does, but that fight doesn't need to be tomorrow. My, I, is, I, it's oh, unlike if McGregor came back and said, if McGregor came back and said the only fight I will take, is that title fight? I think, he, I think he gets it. Oh, they're not. Does, you're dude. crazy. He would get it. I think he would. Dude, Jalen Turner can wait. If he demanded it, if he demanded it, he said, um, "It's that fight or nothing." I think he gets and it. And it would be the biggest pay per view of be all ma- time. It'd be massive. It Probably, be massive. but he massive. doesn't deserve it. And I, oh yeah, but deserving would, it and getting it are two uh, different. I'd be so shocked. I'm. I'm with you. I'm I with know you. He are. doesn't deserve it. No I way does you he are. But you're being it. such a, like, instead of a casual, you're, you're just being, being a hard. Yeah, you're being like too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, no. Lee, it's, it's so possible. Lee, it's unlikely. No, it would possible. The best thing that could happen to this podcast outside of Patty and Molly going on like disgusting runs is Connor coming back. 100%. Oh, yeah. 100%. Please. Yeah. If Connor, listen. And you would hate it. No, no, no. <laughs> this is the guy, the guy said if Connor's next fight will be for the belt. If he beats RDA, or Tony Ferguson. They're not 100 percent Artie doesn't move the needle like that, though. Like, I don't think he's fighting you don't think Art- so? No, no, I don't know. Yeah, what, what about Tony? I think he could fight RDA. Tony, may- Tony, maybe. Tony, maybe. R- RDA. RDA and so. him already had the had like the beef. But that, but that was when RDA like had the belt, though. 
No, it wasn't. no, no, no. no it wasn't. They had the beef more recently. Yeah, backstage yeah, he, last time McGregor fought. That's, that's right. But Conor was that's, like, but that's one that's stemming from that. And then Conor was like, when he like, saw RDA, yeah, and was so, like, yeah, McGregor was like, oh, like, like, oh, yeah. I forgot about you. Yeah, True. McGregor was very like, oh, like, I, you're, listen, like, uh, you're still here. Like, my, yeah. My, my point <laughs> like, he, was like, that. RDA, I don't think he, I like, I have all the respect and love for RDA as a fighter. He just, when we're like, when you're talking like moving needles and like selling pay per views, I agree. I just think there's better, like, I think he, he would sell more pay per views fighting like Chandler. I think he'd sell more yeah. pay per views fighting like even Poirier yeah. for a fourth time. I think would even do more pay per views. But I just think there's, there's better options. There's no way. That Connor's next fight is for the belt. If he wins one fight, if he Don't wins one, there's fight, no way. If there's, there's a will, there's, always, a there's way. always a way. But <laughs> if if he wins one more fight, a hundred percent, I think yeah. he does get the belt. Yeah. But if he doesn't win against like a Chandler, Tony, RDA, whoever. Okay, Chandler is different. I, I also don't know. A Chandler if, fight would also, I was literally, I was yeah. just, I was just gonna say what Andy Sakart said in the chat. I don't know if he even wants to do 155 ever again. Yeah, that's no, that's a fact. Thing. I that, think that's, I think that's that a massive the fact. I, unlikely. I agree part. with, yeah. I agree with that for sure. But that but, wasn't but, his take. But some of the, yeah, some of the, it was for the 155. Title, no, title but that's not what your take was. It wasn't right. like, oh, he's too big now. Your take was, no, he doesn't deserve it. He's not gonna. No, get I said he won't fight for the title next. That it, like Conor McGregor's next fight will not be for the title. Was was the guy? I mean, most fight. likely that's the most I would likely agree. not. I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Yeah, right. But I, like, think I, I think about, seven, he gave think, me even odds on on Conor McGregor to not fight for the title next for his next. I would fight. take, I'll take that odds. five grand. I would take the odds. Whoever you are out there. But you said he was forty IQ. Think about he think about his quote though. It was in it was about boxing with Ariel Hawani. He's like, oh, you want to win a boxing world title? You're probably gonna have to fight a few times to get that, right? He said. Mm, no. Yeah, dude, he's he is he just game. wants a title shot. He yeah, is yeah, the game. Yeah. He feels like yeah, he's gotten to the yeah, level where he yeah. just gets a title shot every dude, time. He, he, is he might be Turner. at that level. Give me a Jalen Turner a title shot. He's gonna have to win probably at least three more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just sound <laughs> like I mean, like at least just like MMA red edge. Like, like, <laughs> no. like, no, no, no. I can't believe Connor's getting this. No. He hasn't won a fight at one fifty five yeah. since twenty fifteen. Yeah, what? Mm-hmm. What is this? Which I think actually might be true. I yeah. think that might be true, but nobody cares. The, no, not, not at all. Literally, you think anyone gives a fuck? Everyone, nobody cares. The ca- like the casual person who buys pay per views still thinks like, Connor's the best Connor's fighter back. in the world. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Which is why he should fight Tony or Chandler. If anybody he should fight Tony, title. I think he should fight Tony. I like to see him fight Chandler. I, the guy was the guy was clowning me for for suggesting as a Tony Connor fight. fan. The Tony Chandler fight is the one that makes all the sense to me. But that, but I think, but that's like what makes a good fight. Yeah, but I as a I would, fan, I would, I don't I would want like to see fight, him fight somebody that hasn't fight. like just got like I just want to win. Just got like dominated. I guess Chandler he didn't get like dominated. He got Con- he got Connor's knocked, not going to fight though for a while. Like he's not in USADA, so it's going to be at least six yeah. months from whatever. No, he, he ain't fighting until twenty twenty three. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't think so. Yeah, Dana and, uh, pretty much said minimum. already. Probably like first quarter twenty twenty three is when he like he thinks he's even like maybe that's January pay per view. He he did maybe, the January maybe yeah. They're going to Australia too. So no, he's not fighting. Nah, he I, know, fight I know, I know. I'm not saying that. I, I was just, I was just to, saying news. Vegas. Uh, Volk announced it. Uh, Volk in, oh, okay. in an interview said that they're going to Australia first quarter of 2023. Maybe he said they're going to Brazil. He said his title shot. He said Brazil 2023 as well. Yeah, because yeah. Dana said we're not going to go there in 2022, year, but he they do want to go back. Uh, Yair said that Volk is ducking him again. I don't. I'm going to be honest. It's tough because it's like, how, does Yair have better striking than Volk? No. No. So I don't think he's better at anything. No. Yeah. So he, he he's would. He's taller. He's just taller, yeah. Is, but everyone's pretty much taller than Volk and it hasn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Yeah, Volk would just. Volk run out also has crazy long arms. Yeah. Like he's like, yeah, For I think he's like four or five height. inches shorter than Holloway. He had longer arms, longer reach. But yeah, the. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other uh, crazy news. Brito. I mean, this ACL. weekend is UFC London. Patty and Molly, I'm flying out tomorrow. Yeah, I mean that's that's huge. We we can't uh, finish the show without mentioning that. Obviously, best of luck to the two Scousers. I saw they just put out a podcast. The whole team, Patty, Molly, their three coaches, recapping last UFC London. I was listening to that. It was a, a very funny podcast. They talked about the whole hand sanitizer incident. Patty kept the hand sanitizer bottle. Yeah, and uh, they put it in the trophy case at the at Love the gym. Kind of funny. Tapuria said, said something recently. Oh, Tapuria, like uh, hand sanitizer boy. No, yeah, hand sanitizer yeah. boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what did he do? Oh, he said that uh, our take, oh, like T yeah. City is it's shit, shit city now. Which is like, dude, he had he got submitted and got pulled his arm. Got I don't pulled think out. he looked bad before that. 
No, no I thought I he looked good. I thought it was going to be a close. I thought it was going to be a close round, but he's probably yeah. going to. And also, I what I was really not even surprised, but like, oh, okay, he's really into it. Was like Ortega got on the mic right away and was like, yeah. hey. Like Yair, nothing but respect for you. But if you don't get that title shot, let's run it back again. And, and I think Yair felt, he was seemed like, like he felt so bad, like for the fans. He was like, "I'm so fucking sorry to fans." I yeah, for sure. I mean, he. I, I think, mean, it's when, you, when you think about like think about the pressures on you when like you're the main event, lights are out before you come out, weigh-ins, yeah. and it's like the man who this card was built around, and you just fucking like throw your crowd shoulder is going out. nuts for him during nuts, the walkout. Nuts, there's a love. huge Mexican crowd there. Yeah, so it was for both. When you just throw your shoulder out in the first four minutes, like it's that's brutal. And yeah. then when we got off the train, there was people taking photos with this guy, and Lee and I were like, "Who's that?" And he was just some uh, was contender series guy. Contender series guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do we know his name? I forget his name. Well, he, we'll see him on contender he's season. Not, be like the Leo starts, meme and be like, from, "Oh, that's him." Yeah. Oh, he's an upcoming yeah. contender series. Yeah, yeah. contender like series a, is twenty six. Interesting. He's yeah. Like, uh, uh, from like the Bronx originally. Yeah, oh, he, he still like lives there. He was you want to know who it's sneaky could be? Maybe I could not be. Also, I, I'll remember um, him if you say it. PG Sarah's guy. I think Sarah. The, his name's Dennis. Like, um, it has like a crazy end of his last name. Like, ends with like a, like a K A. But there's a guy that I know they've been training with Matt Sarah for a while that I think is doing contender well, series well, this wait, year. Well, wait, what did you say? Uh, like, because I bet this guy was like a. a 55 or I was gonna say like 55, maybe 70. Okay. That, maybe that 45. Would... I'm trying to like in that are you talking about it's like Dennis it starts with Dennis a Bazooka? Yes. That was who I was thinking of at least. Let me I'm pretty sure he's fighting. Bazooka is his real last name. It's if your last name is Bazooka. I think it's how you great it, last name. I I mean it's that's, not how that's you a guy pro- I want to bet. It's on. like sort of it's sort of how you pronounce it, but it's like spell it's like B U Z U J K A. So yeah, I knew it had that. Oh, it wasn't this guy. He's fighting contender series though. I think this, this guy year, right. Is and when is that back? Twenty six. Yeah. So next Bazooka week. is fighting week? in my, contender my buddy, series. My buddy's the a week from today. Main, main event. Yeah. Back week from today. Oh yeah, oh, I'm yeah. excited. Pfeiffer. Money's in the crumbs of contender series. Yes. Some picks, boys. We will. Picks. We will so be money's in that. the crumbs. Another thing, Thursday. I'm not sure what time we'll do the show. I'll find time to do it from London. At awesome. some point. Yeah. Yeah. But, Even if it's Friday or whatever. Yeah, we'll um, find time to do a UFC London pre-show for sure on Spinning Back this. So make sure you come back to the channel. Maybe if you, even if you got like 10 minutes in the hotel room with one of them. It'd be great with Patty if or possible, Molly. possible, yeah, yeah. Either of them or both. Yeah. Obviously, in a, in a And for those who world. don't know, Dave's Dave's going. Dave's going. It's <laughs> the, the crew is me, Dave, Spider, Austin. Are they going to address Dave in like the UFC fight kick? I don't know. So <laughs> I talked to Dave sick. about it. And when I talked to Dave, he hadn't decided what the walkout of oh. He said he has a like a jumpsuit that would work, but he said he also thought about going full British with it and doing like a top hat monocle thing. I, but we'll see. The only thing is Dana may give him special privilege. Oh yeah. Dana loves because him. I know for the most part you have to wear you have the to kit. wear it would the be kit because so I think that's in the contract. See Dave yeah. in the, the fight kit. It would be hilarious. The UFC. I want him in a like fight a UFC kit. hat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like flat brim gloves yeah. on, like holding the bucket. Like I want I, I want all of it. Yeah. Just like just says Pimblet on the back and just yeah. in McCann. Yeah. yeah. One, that, that he like has a, he has a change for each one. Yeah. yeah. That's it's, what the trainers do. It's gonna be great. Obviously, we'll get content with them. So follow Dave me on Twitter and we'll be posting about it all week. I just bought a security shirt today for when I'm around them. And uh, thank you to everyone who came up, saw us at Long Island. Thank you to everyone for tuning in today. And shout out Matt Schnell and Roman Feraldo. Great show, boys. Great guests. That was awesome. Sorry about the audio at first. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in.